Now we've got something pre-war and American here. NSU RO80. There's a lovely F-Type Victor estate over there. I think we'll have to have a closer look at that one in a bit. Here is that Lancia app here. Shell Spyrax e 140 EP gear oil tin. All the minis that are in the park here today. Well, we're getting towards the end of the day here. That's Malvern. It's like the Italian job. Um. Well, welcome to the old classic car channel. Today we are in Malvern for the Malvern Classic Car and Motorcycle Show. We last visited here October 2022. This is September 2023. What cars will we see today? Beautiful, very fruity sounding Worsley 6110. Mm. So hopefully that's just a taster of the many cars we will see today here in Malvern. This is a section I'm looking forward to most of all, the pre-1960s, this is where all the pre-war and cars of the 40s and 50s are lumped together. And it's headed up by this fantastic ex-post office's Morris Z van. What a little cracker that is, based on the Morris 8 running gear. You can tell the Royal Mail vans as opposed to the regular Z vans because of these carriage type door handles. The regular Morris Z vans just have normal door handles, but for some reason the post office vans have those. I also think the bonnet catches are different. This has the lift up spring loaded catches, whereas I've got a feeling you use one of those T handles to open the budget locks on the bonnets of the regular Z van. So there are quite a few differences between the post office vans and the regular Z vans. Right, next up we have an MGA, a fixed air coupe MGA. A Triumph TR4, lovely one with roof. Is it a Surrey roof? It is indeed. We'll lift out Surrey roof panel there in place. On a lovely sunny day like this, you actually want the roof up just to keep the interior cool because otherwise it can get really, really hot. What a beautiful interior we have there. Mm -hmm. Stunning classic Triumph. Real, real Bobby Dazzler. Look at this magnificent Austin. And not only is it an Austin, it is an Austin for sale. A 1935, I'm just looking at the screen, 1935 Austin Hartford 16.6, fully restored at great cost, over £30,000. What a magnificent machine this is. Here are the details if you wish to buy an Austin Hartford for yourself. There you go. Yeah, it's super clean. Look at the coachwork on that. What a magnificent interior as well. 
headlining lovely west of England cloth yeah very handsome machine indeed yeah we got here nice and early we got here before half eight I think so we were one of the first cars on the field that gave us a chance to have a look around the auto jumble there's a little Morris Miner just rumbling in Mark 3 4 Cortina and an MGB behind that This is such a wonderful location for a classic car show in the shadow of the Malvern Hills just over the back there. Next to this beautiful immaculate Austin we have this. This is a car I'm drawn to, a lovely oily ragging looking really original Prefect. This is an E493A4 Prefect, about 1952, possibly 53 but not much later than that. And this has the 1172 side valve engine. And it just looks super original, the proper old number plates, original registration and original plates. So if you wanted to, you could probably research the history of that one and trace it all the way back. Many, many areas, the original registration records still survive for lots of these old car registration series. So with a bit of luck, you might find that the local archives, wherever this was first registered, still have some of the old registration details. And that gives you the opportunity to research the history of the car of course Ooh, the old builder here the Wolseley 680 police car what a cracker that is yeah, Dixon of Dot Green has arrived right anyway back to the prefect yeah a lovely prefect original registration so it gives you the chance to research the history but if the number had been sold off it and it had just been issued with an age related plate that link with its past would have been broken and that's why I'm so keen on seeing cars with their original registration number still in place. There's a nice Riley RM just driving in there. We're hoping to see lots of cars that we don't normally see because this is a little bit out of our usual patch for a classic car show, which is what we try and do as often as we can, just to really have see a different set of cars to those that we normally encounter back up our way. And next to the prefect, we have this lovely early-ish example of the Ordax era Hillman Minx. This one's 1956. What a great little car this is. Super clean. Yeah, this era of car it was the Ordax Hillman Hillman Minx. They went through several variations. They changed the styling of these every year or two. But there's no mistaking the classic familiar shape of the Hillman Minx. And there's that, the Wolseley 680 police car. How cool is that with the bell on the front and the speakers on the roof? That's a very groovy car. If you, if you like me, watch lots of the old black and white films on Talking Pictures TV channel. Well, worth looking at if you haven't seen it. You'll see so many of these old films. And uh, more often than not, you see the police driving around in a Wolseley 680 just like this. What a fantastic old survivor that is. And there's that glorious Riley RM we just saw pulling in. Let's carry on along here. I think we'll be revisiting this section more than once before the day is through as more cars arrive. But I think we will amble up towards the main entrance itself and just catch some of the arrivals as they drive in because I think it's always fun to see cars driving as opposed to just parked up statically. I like to try and mix in a bit of both. Lovely air cool 911. Our next K150 following that in. Perfect for a day like this down in Worcestershire. What a cracker that is, left hand drive. GBGT It's followed by a Peugeot 205 GTI I think that's a 1.6 if the wheels are any guide 1.9 is a slightly larger diameter different pattern wheels I think this is one of the earlier 1.6 cars Yep I have a real strong following now 
and a Morris 1100, a 1967 Morris 1100, the ADO 16. It's a four-door car, HCA. The CA tells us that's a North Wales registration number. And what a great little survivor that is. Best-selling car for probably eight of the years throughout the 1960s. Those things were everywhere. Austins, Morrises, Woolseys, MGs, Rileys. So many different badge engineered variants of the 1100 and the 1300. Many of the shows that we go to have a featured car or manufacturer. Today, minis, classic minis, are the featured car, the special cars to be celebrated at this particular gathering at Malvern. And my youthful assistant has spotted some classic Americana. A Chevrolet. The advanced design cab of the, looks like a 3100, a half ton Chevrolet. Yeah, a great pair of classic American trucks over there. I think we'll have a closer look at those before too long. Yep, yeah, we've got a Chevy 3100 stepside pickup in the front there. Later ones had a one piece screen, but this is an earlier one with a two piece windscreen. Yeah, and these were called the Advanced Design, this particular series of Chevrolet introduced in the late 1940s. And behind that, we've got a much later Ford of the mid 1960s with what they call the flare side. Different manufacturers had different names for the shapes of the pickup bodies. But by and large, most people call those flat sided pickups the flare sides. And the body on the Chevy, the step sides. I think step side was actually Chevrolet's term for that particular style of body, but it tends to get used for Fords and Internationals and so on. Originally these were all straight six powered. A very dependable straight six Chevrolet engine. That sounds beautiful that one, really smooth sounding engine in that. MGR V8 in front, just drives by. Triumph Stag, and there's that fantastic Ford. There's the Goddess, the Citroen DS. Another classic French car this time, a Renault 5 Turbo. Wow, the Turbo, I think that's the Turbo 1, as it was retrospectively known, rear engine rally car. Mostly you see the Turbo 2s, so that's probably a slightly earlier, slightly rarer car I would have thought. Yeah, classic French cars here today, which is always good to see. And look at this Saab 95, a V4 powered. Wow, well, look at that. There's a very faded Toyota van here. One day those will start appearing at these classic shows. But for the time being, probably not just yet. This is an agricultural centre. Many, many agricultural related events take place here. This is a, the Three Counties Showground in Malvern. By gum, that's a whopper. Real variety of classic and vintage cars pulling in and out of Malvern, that's good to see. I think the fair weather will be bringing lots of people out indeed. Look at that, what a beast. Cry, I think that's a Chrysler Imperial. A big woofly V8 engine. And we've got a BMW iZetta showing off the uh, entry and exit arrangements of those great little three wheelers. There's a gorgeous Daimler behind that, a Daimler 15. I can see a little Metropolitan as well, the Nash Stroke Austin Metropolitan. A mighty Rolls Royce behind that. A stunning Daimler 15 saloon, about 1934 I would have thought. What a stunning car that is, pre-select the gearbox, straight six engine. Very, very swish, real quality car. And a bullnose Morris, look at that. A little bullnose Cowley. A Willam, a little Lambretta van. A Willam was owned and powered by Lambretta. Postman Pat's little van by the look of it. How fantastic is that? And this, the Nash Metropolitan. These were built by Austin originally on Nash's behalf. Nash wanted a small car mass-produced car for the American market so they contacted Austin and they actually built them for them. Initially they were sold as Nash's 
but in later years, I mean that's a fairly early one without the opening boot lid, but in later years they were actually sold, I believe, as Austin Metropolitans here in the UK. But initially they were designed purely for the American market. The magnificent rolls of a Rover 800, a facelifted Rover 800, a VW Golf Mark 1, the driver. Cars are flooding in now. There's a GT6 Mark II just through there. We'll see that one coming through in a moment. Oh, we got a real mix of cars. Look at that Transit Camper, Mark 1 Ford Transit Camper. Mark 2 GT6. Great little sports car. And a couple of minis coming in. Just standing out of the way so I don't get flattened because cars are coming and going, leaving and entering. Beauty that is. Escort XR3 or XR3i. XR3 legend on the side. Yes, it is an XR3, so that's the carburetted car before the fuel injected XR3i was introduced. That's quite a rarity now. More mini, more mini goodness. I spy an MGB GT and a Morris Minor and a couple more minis. So yeah, so some really great cars lining up to come in. Let's just nip over here. Audi Quattro. Super little Morris Minor four door saloon now on a C registration. So that is 1965. C reg ran from January to December of that year. And then in 67 they changed it so it didn't run from January through to the end of the year. Oh, that's a lovely, sweet sounding engine. The little A series engine sounds really nice in that little 1098cc. A couple more minis. We've got a minivan and a mini saloon behind that. Rover SD1 V8. Now, what do we have here? Is that a Lotus or Lotus powered? I don't know. A Lotus badge on the front, so it looks like a, an Elan Plus 2, but very, very modified. <laughs> Look at this. Ooh, we've had a couple of PV Volvos in the past. This is a PV 544. Very similar running gear, the four cylinder running gear to that of the Volvo Amazon. These are all left hand drive, that's a P4, PV544 Sport. I think they have a slightly perkier cam in. A couple of replica Cobras. Something tells me we're going to have a really good turnout of old cars here today in Malvern. Now we've got something pre-war and American here. What have we got here? Got to have a closer look at the badge just to see what it is. Marquette. Hmm. I think we'll have a proper closer look at this one a little bit later when we go for a walk around the cars when they're all parked up. But yeah. That's a very unusual American car. Wooden wheels, a bit like those we had on the Dodge, but a Marquette. That's a very unusual car. And this is a Reliant Ant. That's right, isn't it? Left-hand drive Cortina, a Taurus in fact. 
a German Taunus or Taunus. Ford of Germany is equivalent to our Cortina. That would be a Mark V Cortina if it was here in the UK. Very bonny little MG Midget, followed by a Mark III MX-5. Morgan, of course, Morgan. Malvern is the home to Morgan. We passed the signs just up the road for the Morgan factory. So I would expect to see more than one Morgan here today. Yeah. Perfect for a day like this. Another Mini behind that. And a Saab Cabriolet. TR7 drophead, a two litre car. Oh, an Austin Cambridge. A55 Cambridge Mark II. One of the big fins. Introduced in 1959 with a 1489cc engine. The old B series. The little Morris Minor follows the red mini in. Single no tech blue spot lamp on the front of this one. What a cracker that is! What a lovely colour as well. I love to see the cars arriving, it's just great to see them moving under their own steam. And then we'll have a proper close look at them a bit later on. We've got a Granada gear here, registered 19, about 1984. Got a wonderful 1964 registered Cadillac there. Wow. Really pouring in now. Porsche, another TR7 drop head. Silver TR7 drop head in convoy. Beautiful Austin Healy there. Very, very swish indeed. Do like that. MG Saloon. Got a Nissan Pow. MGB Roadster. Daimler, either the V8 250 or the two and a half litre, the V8 powered car. The Mark 1 Escort van. Quite a dusty car park this today. Look at that over there, 1950s Ford Zodiac, the six cylinder Ford Zodiac. Great looking car, two tone paintwork, very, very nice indeed. And there's a Morris Minor behind that, it's quite an early one. It's a split window series two, two door saloon. The B sounds very healthy. Yeah, there's that great little Morris Minor. Here's that Nissan Pow. I saw one of these at Cape Storm the other day. Was it this one? I'm not sure. But quite an interesting little car. Really interesting little car, that one. Audi Cabriolet there and a TVR behind that. Yeah, real gaggle of cars coming in here. There's that Daimler, the 2.5 litre V8 car. The V8 engine by Edward Turner, a well known chap in motorcycling circles. He also designed the four and a half litre engine that ended up in the Daimler Majestic Major MGC Ford Escort, Mark 5 door hatch, a Mark 4 Escort, I think that is. Triumph TR6, Anglia 105E in the background over there. 
a Jaguar XK8 or an XKR. Or Corvette Stingray. Fiberglass bodied V8 Corvette. Yeah, a couple of classic British 50s cars here. The Zodiac and the Series 2 Morris Mine. Great to see that. It's got the cheese grater grill, so that's an early Series 2. That grill was originally seen on the Highlight Morris Miner MM, and it's still got the correct larger openings, the rear wings, compared to the later Moggy Thousands. These have a much larger opening. Quite a few of the early cars like this have been retrofitted with new wings for a later Moggy, but it's good to see this one on the proper shaped wings, the rear mud guards. That's something to look out for on the early versus the late Morris saloons. The Rover 75, little golf estate. Quite a groovy Mitsubishi pickup with crew cab. There's that Anglia, the 105E. Try and not get in anyone's way. There's the Stingray, what a great looking car that is. And a magnificent pre-war Riley, wow. That probably takes the award for the most stylish car here that we've seen so far today. But it is still very early in the day, so I'm sure we're going to see some real gems while we're walking around. I think we're going to get through a bit of uh, shoe leather with this one. And what a beautiful, stunning car. And a wonderful setting, the Malvern Hills there in the background. What a great setting for a classic car show, especially when the weather is this glorious. I was hoping it would be like this. Last year I came in October, a bit later in the year, and it was a glorious run down through Great Malvern and down the hill, down to the showground here. And again, we are blessed with fantastic weather and some fantastic cars. Look at that. What a stylish car that is. Might have to look up the model number of that one. It could be a Kestrel or an Adelphi. Uh, there are so many different Riley models, shapes and sizes that you really have to know your Rileys to be 100% sure what you're looking at. Either way, beautiful streamlined pre-war Riley. C-Class Mercedes, an AMG C-Class Mercedes, a Porsche 924, a modern VW and a little MG Metro up there, followed by a Mark II Escort, a Vauxhall van and a beautiful Morris a Morris Mini pickup, that's quite an early one. That's a really lovely little pickup truck. Another wonderful Healy. I only found out recently that these Austin Healy's, the bodies were actually produced by Jensen on behalf of Austin and Healy, because the Austin Healy was a collaboration between Donald Healy and the Austin Motor Company. But yeah, the bodies were actually constructed by Jensen. Love a little MG. Twin spare wheels on the back, that's more often something you see on pre-war singers. Run oh, running a bit rich that one, I think the choke stuck on. Mark II Escort. Great little beetle over there with sunroof and a Bedford CA, CF dropside truck, a Mark 1 Bedford CF. You don't see those every day. Let's see if we can just sneak around here. There's a little VW Polo, a Mark 1 Ford console behind that. We'll get a proper look at that in a minute. So we've got another classic bike running through here. No need to queue when you've got a classic BSA or Suzuki in back. Yeah. Some wonderful, wonderful vehicles. There's a Rover P6, 2000 S, oh, TC. Twin carburetor, two litre car. It's one of the facelifted Rover P6s. And we got a somewhat lowered four door Cortina Mark II. There's that Mark I Ford console. Mark II Cortina on the banded wide steel wheels and we've got a Ford Orion. Well, no, it's not an Alfa, is it? It's a Lancia. It's a Beta Monte Carlo. And a very, very colourful BMW Z3 behind that. 
Yeah, that's a rare car. Chevrolet back there. Yep, well, that's the beaten Monte Carlo. So it's mid engine, engine's hiding away under that cover there. Yeah. Rare, rare car. It's a Series 1 E type there. Beautiful on a day like this, although when you're stat in traffic, it can get a little bit warm sitting there, I bet. What else have we got? A Lotus Elan Plus 2. We saw that very modified one coming in before. This one looks a bit more like Colin Chapman originally designed. And behind that we have a Ford GT40 rep. I'm assuming it's a replica. Great Chevy two-door there. Wow, look at that. You can hear and feel the rumbling of the Ford GT40. It's like a 50s bank holiday traffic jam. Loads and loads of interesting old cars. And look at this, a Jowett Javelin. What a belter that is. What a stunning old Jowett that is. Isn't that fantastic? That's a beauty that is. That's one of the cleanest Javelins I think I've ever seen. Really, really nice car. Another Cortina here. Well, the other one was a Taurus, but same thing. So this is a Mark V. Mark V Ford Cortina. MGB Roadster here on an H plate. Another one behind it with a slightly later grille and a B GT behind that. And a Mazda 121 behind that. There's a Spitfire coming in over there. Love the little Lancia Appia there behind the Peugeot 405 estate. Again, quite a rare sight now. Yeah, those Lancias are very neat little cars. I like that. Following the old English white Morris Minor, we have the Ford Console Capri. Those are quite a sleek looking car. Apparently they were very expensive cars to build. I don't think Ford made much on those. They're very complicated cars to produce. The body shell, the body parts, pressing those front wings. I think it was all a bit of a trial for Ford. I don't think those in the Console Classic Saloon sold as well as had been hoped. But it's great to see this one here today. What a cracker. And another Volvo PV544. Wow, that's two. Good grief. You can go to many shows and not see one for months on end. And we've had two here today. That's great to see. My 544 was like a pale blue colour. And then a bit later we had a 444. These are really popular in historic rallying as well. They go really, really well. Coil sprung all around. Very torquey, quite a powerful tunable engine, that B-series engine, probably a B18, the 1800cc engine, that particular car, which was enlarged to 2 litre in some of the later Amazons. It started out as a 1.4 litre RPV444, it was about 1952 or 53, it's quite an early one, and that had the 1.4 litre version of this engine, but the vast majority of the 1.8s 
Uh, sorry? Did you watch it this morning? Or was it here from last year? Or? Oh, right, great stuff. Nice to see the PV, I love it. <laughs> Another follower of the old classic car channel, that's good to see. We were at an event yesterday and quite a few people came over and said hello and watched these rambling videos that Harley and I put together for our respective channels. So uh, if you see us at any of these events, come and say hello. It's always nice to see you actually and speak to the people that watch these videos that we do. There's a lovely little Lotus Elan Sprint, the tuned up version of your regular Lotus Elan. That sounds very, very neat indeed. Lovely little car that is. So that's the fixed head version, some of them are open top, but this is the fixed head, very very nice indeed, early mini, well it's a later registration but oh, that's an unusual one is it, and I'm not quite sure what we're looking at there because it's got the wind up windows but it's got Mark 1 back lights, got quite a tuned up one, it's got the twin tanks which was optional I think on the Cooper S's, so yeah really nicely turned out mini. It's got quarter lights as well, the opening quarter lights, which I think the Innocenti, the Italian built Minis had those on. So maybe it's an Innocenti, I'm not quite sure, but no doubt we'll see that later when we go for a walk around the main classic car area. The Royal Enfield. A little Nissan Micra. What's this GT4, a Celica GT4 Toyota. Cobra. TV our camera, the occupants waving. There's a Triumph TR behind that. A Triumph Vitesse and a Morris Minor van. There's that lovely TR. Wow, TR3. Stunning Triumph Vitesse convertible. Another Citroen DS, oh it's an ID19 I think. What a great looking car that is. Such a futuristic design. If you've not seen it yet and you like your French cars, check out our Devon video, the recent Devon video, because there's some really rare French cars made it into that one. There's a beautiful little Moggy van. And a Bentley Continental over there. And a 4CV. A Renault 4CV, wow. Wow, the 4CV and it's right-hand drive. That's a fairly late one with the Dauphine wheels. <laughs> I've got a 54, one of these. Where was that? Oh, that was at Alton Park, wasn't it? Is that, oh, the Renault 5 engine. Yes, that's right. <laughs> yeah, I featured this little car. That's Alton Park at the Autos de France meeting. That's got a tuned up Renault 5 engine in it. That's a real wolf in sheep's clothing. And I can hear the air cooled purr of an early Ripple Bonnet Citroën 2CV. Look at that. What a great pair of classic French cars. The Renault 4CV. And the beautiful the driver has his beret. And his perfect attire, stripy shirt, and the beret. I knew there was something I was missing when driving a Renault. I need to get a beret, preferably one with a flowery pattern on it, but I can't imagine many people want those. Oh, yeah. And another, now oh, is this a 204 or a 304? It's the 304, a little Peugeot 304 Cabriolet. Again, so many of these cars I haven't seen before. And obviously they haven't featured on the channel, which is really, really great. This is what I always hope for when we come down a little bit further afield. Alfa Romeo Spider there, and a 67 Mustang notch back behind that. Well, these little Peugeots are very elegant little cars, very nice indeed. Oh, 67 Mustang notch back. Is it a V8? Yeah, it's a V8. You could also get those with a straight six in, but I think most of them are V8s. Mark 1 Ford Zephyr now, a six cylinder car. That looks like a beautiful example as well, the Zephyr 6. So we've seen the console before. 
now it's the six cylinder Zephyr and then of course the top of the tree was a Zodiac but yeah what a great looking car that is proper 1950s British car and Ford Prefect an E93A long term is on the channel may well remember I had one of those and I actually bought it about a mile from here it came from Malvern couple of, well a mile or two away from here very very local to here we passed the end of the road where I bought it from actually on the way in this morning so happy memories of that Ford Prefect I've never had a Ford Zephyr either Mark 1, 2 or 3 maybe one day and over here 2CV waits its turn Series 3 Land Rover behind that Mercedes SLK and there's a little MX-5 driving over to the public car parking area well, good to see another pre-war car here that's a pre-war Austin 10 Litchfield so that was the development of the Chrome Rad Austin 10 4 and they put the painted radiator cowl very similar to that of the Austin 7 Ruby and they made the Litchfield which is what that is CMP 312 original registration on it as well well, that's a nice car to see. That's very, very nice indeed. <laughs> NSU RO80 and a Riley 1.5. fantastic Daimler it's a little bit later that one possibly a DB17 I think and a Morris 8 Morris 8 Series E Tourer two fantastic little Tourers the Morris and the Daimler it is actually the slightly later DB18 1948 this particular car Beautiful Rover P2, a sports saloon as well, the low roof line, which is very, very sleek looking car indeed. Toyota MR2, one of the newer classics, modern classics that are here today in Malvern. Ooh, what do we have here? The Mark 1 Jaguar 2.4 or 3.4. They were never actually called Mark 1s when they were on sale, but when the Mark 2 came along, these were retrospectively labelled by most as the Mark 1s with the rear spats as well. Very smooth sounding car, the XK straight 6 engine, like I say 2.4 or 3.4. Another DS, I think that's the third one we've seen today. Gliding in effortlessly. Really smart little moggy. Good to see that original number still on there. I'm surprised someone hasn't tried to take that off, but hopefully it's non-transferable and it'll stay with the car. Yeah. Beautiful little car that is. There's a Chrysler Crossfire. Those were based on the Mercedes SLK running gear. When Chrysler and Mercedes were joined at the hip. That was one of the collaborations that resulted. The Chrysler Crossfire. A bit of classic camper action here with a, oh, it's a Leyland Sherpa. Late 1970s Leyland Sherpa based camper van. Ferrari 328. Lotus Esprit behind that.
Rover 800, a fairly early one. Nice little Ford car in the background and a Carmen gear. A VW based Carmen gear. Carmen, the German coach builder of course. Responsible for the Cabriolet versions of the VW Beetle as well. Oh, what a great little car that is. Got a bullet spec Mustang here, the fastback Mustang. The early P6, the Rover 2000. Right, I think we will amble over towards the main showground. I think we've probably seen most of the interesting arrivals now. Harley's already been over there for some time interviewing a few car owners and having a general look around. So I think we will amble in that general direction. Well, the field has really filled up a fair bit now compared to when it was here before. There's auto jumble here, in there, and also around the corner of the buildings down there. I think the next project is, is to try and catch up with my youthful assistant. I've just spotted about four rows in that direction, catch up with him. But in the meantime, let's have a look around and see what cars are parked up here. And we have a Mark III Triumph GT6 in black. So some of these had the Rotoflex rear suspension. The later ones, they went to the swing spring, all independent rear suspension, but slightly different design. The Rotoflex was a more complicated design, but quite capable. And then when they introduced the swing spring on the Mark IV Spitfire, I think it was, they introduced the same thing on the GT6. Yeah, great little car. Two litre straight six. We've got a Spartan kit car here. A Triumph TR6 on a K-plate. Beautiful car. They sound fantastic, those straight six engines. And talking of straight sixes, we've got a Series 2 XJ6 Jaguar, of course. So what colour is that? Sable. Is that what that's called? Good to see the proper plates, the proper reflective metal plates. On the 70s car, looks just right. And another GT6 this time. It is a Mark II Triumph GT6. So the, all the Mark IIs had the Rotoflex rear suspension. So we've got the later car just at the end over there. And this, a Mark II. Great shape. I do like the shape of these with the small little curvy back lights on the back. Quite prone to being knocked off when you walk around the corner, same with the early Spitfires, but yeah, apologies for shadows. But, yeah, isn't that nice? Great little GT. And some very nice period alloy wheels as well. 
yeah, it's quite cosy in there. Probably quite warm on a day like this, but at least this one has got a fabric opening sunroof, the Web Asto type sunroof, so that's good news. And then here we have an RS Capri, a 3.1. MG Midgets, we saw this one driving in before. And an MGB GT with the V8 alloy wheels. Well, a classic Triumph here, a Herald 1360 convertible. It's got the 1296cc engine, four cylinder, of course. Got an XK8 convertible on the one behind it. This has got a little Perspex screen that's been added to reduce buffeting for the people in the front. Yeah, very bonny little car indeed. Let's carry on along this row. We've got a blue four door. Mark III Ford Cortina, a 1600, and again, the proper metal reflective plates on this early 1970s car, which we approve of. MGB Roadster, it's a V, a V8, hence the extra, extra hump in the bonnet. MX-5, Mark III Mini. And the 10 inch mini light wheels. Try Stag, I think it's a Mark II. Those are Mark II alloy wheels with the stainless covers along the sills. I don't think there are a huge number of differences between the Mark I and the Mark II Stags. They still had the 3 litre Triumph engine, the V8. Oh, very, very tidy indeed. And there's that fantastic white DS. What an incredible car that is. Lamps there, lamps steer as you steer around the bends. Very nifty system indeed. Like I said earlier, we saw some really interesting French cars down in Devon. So if you haven't seen that video yet, please check that one out. Citroen SMs, DS, Traction Avant. Some really, really good sightings. And there's that Saab 95, the V4 Saab 95 that we saw driving in before. That's got the Ford Cologne engine in it, the V4. Set really far forward. Look how far ahead of the axle line. There's the axle line. Look how far forward the engine is. Unlike the two strokes, we were looking at a two stroke yesterday at a different event. The radiator on the two stroke is behind about there. But on these, it's in the conventional position in the nose because these had a longer nose compared to the bull nose Saabs, the two strokes. Oh, great, really practical little cars these are. Bit of an oddball looking car, but I really like them. I very happily have one of these. Very similar in shape to the little bullnose van that I found all those years ago, 30 odd years ago. There's a separate video about that on the channel somewhere as well. That was in really, really rough condition, but someone did go on to restore it, and that's now in the Saab collection over in America. Yeah, I like that nice old sun, uh, roof rack as well. Yeah, how cool is that? Little Saab 95. Let's carry on our stroll along here, past the MX-5 and the, the Midget. Was that Mark V Ford Cortina? Or was that the Taunus? I think that was the Taunus, wasn't it? I'll get it right one day. Great little Mini there. And the Mini 95 van. Little Morris Minor, the four-door saloon, 1965, and another Mark II GT6. Harley's going to be happy about this. He's a big fan of GT6s, and I've got a soft spot for them too, having run a few small Triumphs many, many years ago, late 1980s and the 90s in my case. But yeah, I do like these a lot. We've got a Rover here, the big 800 fastback, and the Mark I Ford Transit Camper. There's a lovely F-Type Victor Estate over there, I think we'll have to have a closer look at that one in a bit. But for now, let's stick to this side of the, rut, the track and we will go over there a little bit later. But yeah, there's going to be some more gems I can tell in the pre-60s parking area. This is the slightly later car, 70s and 1980s. Spitfire, Spitfire 4, Mark 4 rather, GT, MGB, a couple of roads just here. But uh, Chris is, is going to be doing the judging today. Twin carb, 
in over 2000. The VW Beetle with a steel sliding sunroof, no less. Can't be too many of those around. Even though gazillions of Beetles were built over the years, I can't imagine too many of them had the sliding steel sunroof. Not too escort, a 1.6. Track TR6. And then the winner of that section will go forward to the uh, car. Seriously uh, bright, I can hardly even see the screen on the camera. And the Mark 1 Escort van. We've got a Morris Mine 1000, a four door car. There's that fantastic little fixed header land sprint. Those are lovely little cars. Look at this magnificent. Now, I said it was a Morris van, but of course, it's the Austin version. It's not really much of a difference between them, apart from the grill and the badging. What's going on in here? Kick cars, custom built cars. Oh, many, many differences. So, from the outside, it looks like a fairly regular Austin, in this case, van. What we have up here under here. And things begin to get very different. A full race 1500cc Alpha Sud engine, 165 brake horsepower. Oh, I've never seen that before. No, we went through a period of time where Fiat twin cams used to be shoehorned in the Morris Miners, but I don't think I've ever seen an Alpha engine in one before. Whether we can get some of the commercials in on their own. Um, we've also got a special what a great for advert minis. for this sign writer. Proper sign writing on a lovely a old van. Just for minis. Um, we've got a lot of mini cars here. Um, there you go. So if you so need some sign writing doing, in and you're in Herefordshire. So we're starting there with kit cars, customised cars. Anything modified from the 165 brake horsepower in a Morris van, or Austin judging, van. Please. Oh, I'm sure that goes very well indeed. Anyway, carry on. Citroen 2 CV. A 3500S, the manual V8 version. That's the early version of the P6 with a nice tin grill on the front, which I prefer to the, the egg crate grill that the later cars have. And there's the NSU R080, the rotary engine, as designed by Dr. Vankel to give him his correct pronunciation of his name. Custom -built yeah, don't see many of those. Let's have you in the Engines arena. weren't renowned for reliability back in the day. Drivers used to hold up their fingers to, to, when they saw another NSU heading the other way just to count and tell the other driver how many engines they got through that were that unreliable. So drivers passing opposite to each other sometimes, four or five fingers would be held up because they used, used to get through engines like nothing else. Your wonderful classic MGB Roadster 67, another defense. wonderful Citroen uh, DS on a K plate, so come on. and a Triumph Stag here on the end, on and some very period looking alloy wheels. Had a lot of modifications done to their vehicles. Got a Beetle for sale here in grey, MGB Roadster. <laughs> and I guess it's rival of the day, albeit with six on the power. Another glorious, fairly early example of the Triumph TR6. Stunning Mercedes Coupe, also for sale. A lot of cars for sale here today in Malvern. Look at that. Beautiful stacked headlamps. Where's he going? You're looking for us, pal. You go past him. Whoa! Oh, what back. a beauty that is. If you're looking where we are, we're near the ice cream, Kelly's Dairy Ice Cream people, and the Frisian Pavilion, oh. it's called. This has got the American spec lamps, the two circular lamps either side. Whereas typically you had the sort of lozenge shaped lamps on the front of these. You had the W108s and the 109 saloons, depending on whether it was a 6 or a V8. And I think these were the W111s, the coupes. They are beautiful cars. One of these turned up at a pub meeting just the other weekend. A beautiful, stylish car. Modified cars are going into the arena. Well, here we've got an Opel Monza in Section D for 1980s. Some modified Astra here. I'm guessing that's an Ermshire grill. Different grill, non standard grill, and headlamps on that one. They are the people, the public. MGB GT, there's that 205 GT. It doesn't matter what. Doesn't matter. 
Are you coming in? Let's oh, keep going. Lovely. Let's try and get away from these speakers. It's getting a bit loud. There's another uh, kick car coming, coming in. Yeah. As they oh, Audi Quattro and that fantastic yeah. rear engine Renault. Built for Group B rallying in the early 1980s. What a fantastic bit of kit one, that is. Let's have a quick scoot down here. There's that Reliant Ant that we saw driving in before. The Land Plus Two. One escort. Let's have it in the arena. Come on, sir. Bring Mazda it in. One Two One. You never know. You could be a runner-up or a winner. In here, sir. Capri in. injection, the 2.8, the V6 Pardon? powered car. You're not coming in. Lovely oh. Granada gear. All right. Must be something I said. And there's a, right. a, Lotus, on, a Lotus 11 replica. Over there. Brilliant. You don't see too many road registered examples oh, of Lotus 11 one, reps. Two, Exhibition black for coming in. There's the MG Metro. Daimler. But without your participation. 250 Daimler. Then, there's that Nissan Pow. Can't be too many of these. They were never sold here. So yeah, that's could well be the same car. MGB limited edition. And a transit camper. Let's have a look along. Mini row, many, many minis. Different eras, mainly 1980s, 1970s in this case. Straight in. Mostly 1980s. Minis. Keep coming. All sorts of minutes, and here's Keep that coming, coming. one that I was looking at when Straight it was coming in, in. It's on the latest registration, Brilliant. 1980s registration, but it appears to have the outside door handle uh, hinges, but wind-up windows, so and opening quarter lights. There's a bit of everything going on there, and the Mark One rear lights. Try again. Looks like the front Keep end car, lifts off. Custom built. Anything modified from the manufacturing norm, whether it's got go faster stripes on it. It's a 1293 you... engine. That's a 1275 that's been bored out. Big engine in a small body, or put a got a big body in a small engine, whatever. Anything that you may have done yourself, or you've commissioned. It certainly makes working on it a lot easier when you whiz the bonnet off. Anything like that, anything away from the manufacturing norm. Come on, and the more a couple more over here. And a few bits and bobs for sale. You may get a runner-up or a winner plaque. There's another one coming. We were that earlier this morning that we ended up being the first car in section F for sports and convertibles. So that, this area has certainly filled up a little bit since we got here. But we will, like I say, we will have a look at this side of the, uh, the main road through afterwards. We will concentrate on this side and work our way over towards the clubs, which I think are over there. Right, onwards to section E. 1990s onwards so we're getting towards the end of the, the typical time span of cars we feature here on old classic car but let's have a quick look along here Cavalier, is that a Vectra, yep. XJS, a V12 XJS, much plumbing in evidence here 5.3 litre engine I guess they did do some 6 litres in the XJRS's but the regular XJS V12's with a 5.3 fuel injection the early cars were on carburetors but XJS's were on fuel injection by this point in time. Early ones had man you could get a manual gearbox. They were using up some of the leftover stock from the E-Type Series 3 production, but that was only on the very, very early cars. Oh, this one looks very clean indeed. It's a pre-facelift XJS coupe. They changed the shape of the rear side window and the buttresses on the slightly later cars. This is a Le Mans V12 edition. So Jaguar had great success in the late 1980s over at Le Mans with the XJR race cars. And presumably this was built to celebrate that. Number 183 of 280 chassis. Just pause the video if any of these information sheets you want to have a closer read of. Yeah, that's probably quite a rare edition of the XJS. It's got the American spec twin lamps either side, which I think looks pretty cool. Right, I've got a Mitsubishi Evo, a Discovery 2. I had one of those, I had a facelift of one of those. Another Mini, very clean. Escort, is that the RS2000 or the GTI version of the front wheel drive escorts? XR2 Mark 1, Fiesta XR2, that's very, very, very clean indeed. What a great little car that is. 
I think those wheels were also fitted on the Mark II XR2, or possibly that's where those have been from. I don't know. We've got a Rover 75 getting a little bit newer over here. So I'll just have a quick scout around here, just have a general look around. There's that 405 Peugeot estate at the back there. We've got a Beetle here and a Toyota MR2, a Lancia Delta Integrale. Look at this, slightly out of position on the show field. A magnificent Wolseley 6110. Wow. It's a handsome son of a gun. Mm, what a great looking old car that is. I bet that rides along beautifully. Real wafter. What's this AA badge? Bit of an unusual one. South Africa. Is that a clue as to where this car came from, perhaps? Maybe it was sold there originally when it was new. There's no information sheet, so I'm only guessing. Pretoria. Yep. Yeah. This one looks to have spent its early life. And we've got some micro dot sticker here for a company in Zambia. Well, let's have a look in here then. What a beautiful interior. Wow, that survived really, really well. What a great old survival. And yes, this has come in from South Africa. No, I haven't. It needs doing really. Yeah, it's nice. Oh, it's How straight is that? And of course, the illuminated Wolseley badge on the front. Ooh, what a handsome machine. Right, R107 SL Mercedes. Fiesta. Another Lancia Delta into Garali. V8 Jaguar XJ, one of the X308 series. Mini TVR Chimera. So this is a Chimera 450, I think they did the 400, the 450, and was it the 500 as well? Oh, very fruity. But that goes well. Fiberglass body, of course. We still have to have a good look at the chassis because the chassis is steel. And they are a bit prone to rusting on the uh, outriggers by all accounts. Celica GT4. Nissan Micra. There's that 405 Estate. Rolls Royces for our delectation now. Got a silver spirit here. A magnificent pre war rolls. And look at those slats on the, on the front of the radiator there, those are adjustable. So if you want extra cooling, you open them out. And when, on maybe in the winter, and you want the engine to warm up more quickly, you can close the slats, block off the airflow to the radiator, and it'll warm up a bit quicker. Yeah. Proper, proper car. And here, much later, this is a Shadow 2. A Silver Shadow 2. And on the end here, another Silver Spirit. Or it could be the Wraith, but I think this is the Spirit. Yeah. Yet another classic vehicle for sale, this time an early Bedford CF drop side pickup truck. Wow, isn't that great? That's very appealing. I like the look of the early CFs. I wasn't so keen on the CF2 that came along, it had a bit of a blockier, chunkier front. I think there's these early CFs. They're very nice looking indeed. Of course, these were the replacement to the Bedford CA, which was produced for many years. I mean, that went back to the 1950s. Bedford by Vauxhall, the little badge on the dash. Yeah, what a clean little truck this is. Yeah. 
very appealing. Who remembers driving one of these back in the day? Have you any experience of Bedford CFs from back in the day? Most of the CFs that we seem to see around at shows now are campers. They tend to get looked after a lot better than working vehicles, vans and pickup trucks and so on. They always tend to get hammered and driven into the ground. Yeah. How neat is that? <laughs> Ooh, I like that. No prizes for guessing what Harley's been buying today. Well, over in this corner we seem to have many minis and a few of the later classics over there as well. Um, no, it no, it isn't sorry, because it hasn't got the, well, the little Wolseley Hornet. Yeah, the, yeah. So, I recognise the wheels. It's a bonny little car, isn't it? 1966 Wolseley Hornet. A variety of minis. Like I say, mini is the, kind of the featured car for this particular meeting. <coughs> minis and commercial vehicles are the featured sections here today. Not so many commercial vehicles here, but a great selection of minis. And look at this phenomenal. Mark II Mini Estate, so it's a Morris, so it's a little, little traveller, the Morris Mini, fantastic, it's got the reverse Cooper S rims on it as well, very very smart indeed, some, some other lovely Minis, a fuel injected Mini Cooper here, super straight, another one for sale, God, how many cars are for sale today, Mini Clubman Estate and an x -Pate. Lovely looking little car. And the van, Mini 95, they used to call these a Mini 95, the van and the pickup. How clean is that under there? And an immaculate VW Golf GTI Mark 1. Again, super clean. The effort that goes into keeping these cars this immaculate. Can't be overestimated, really. Yeah, this minivan is a real little cracker. Nice motor litre wheel on this one. And a wooden dashboard. A, yeah. <laughs> Ooh, a few luxury additions on this particular min. Very clean little van. Ooh, this one's having fun over there. Now let's go to the very back row of the entire show field. Bit of a mixture here, an Escort van, and a super little Morris Minor four door, that's about 1960. A little parking lamp, a little built in parking lamp where you can see where the slightly earlier miners would have had their trafficators, the pop up trafficator indicators. And on these cars, it's just a blanked off moulding by this point in time. But you can see where it would have been on the two doors. Obviously, you just had the door at the front, and then they would have been set into the rear panel around here somewhere. Yeah, it's a lovely colour. That's quite a rare colour, I think, that actually. The name of which escapes me, but I did used to know what colour that was. Mark II XR2, lovely little mini next to that. Peugeot. BMW E36 Coupe, RS Turbo, Peugeot 205, Mark II Golf GTI, XR3 i Ford Escort, Mini, a flame red limited edition version of the Mini from the late 1980s, the Honda Prelude, Mark II Escort Rally Car, a Chevrolet fleet side pickup truck, look at the size of that. So much room under the engine bay, I and mean, look at that. You could fit the engine out of an oil tanker in there, there's so much space. How much room is there in there? The engine is lost. You could have a transverse V12 in there. <laughs> you could, yes. <laughs> wow, you could sleep under there. Looks like a really original paint, yeah, actually. Nice, it's yellow. Yeah, yeah, and it's yellow, of course, which we approve of. So, yeah, this is coming from the state, isn't it? The sun's got to that uh, dashboard top. Oh, well, that's, 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 oh yes. It's usually a sign of a California truck. Uh, there you go. 
no rust. And here, look at this wonderful A55 Cambridge Mark II. Now, what are those wheels off? Are they off a magnet, the earlier, like ZA or ZB magnet? Look a bit like an MGTD, don't they? But, no. Uh, I'm not quite sure what those wheels are off. Yeah, we had one of these. We had a 59 A55 Cambridge Mark II, just like this. Ours was in black. It had the 1622 engine out of an A16 hours, but otherwise it's a fairly standard car. Yeah, it's a great. It's had replacement sills because originally there would be a jacking point, little removable panel just there, about halfway along the sill. Yeah, what a great looking little car. And a tasty array of badges on it as well. Look at all these badges. more classic MGs here. Nice mini light wheels just like the ones on Dad's MG BGT. Talking of GTs, we've got a rubber bumper GT this was here. Yeah. Actually most of these were this club was it? Was it? Sorry no not Cape Eccleshaw Show. Oh Eccleshaw were these there were they? Yes. Oh club. Do oh, really? you remember this? Oh the South this Staffs, Staffs yes. Yeah. Yes, this MG tier. That's right. Yeah. The South Staffs MG Club yesterday yeah. we were at the Eccleshaw show which was a one day yeah. This club, this club were there. Two places. Yeah. Mm. Right, we've reached the furthest corner back here of the show field. It's in a different location because last year's show was behind those fences over there. It was in those fields over there, so it was a different layout. So now we are going to go down past the arena. What a brilliant turn up, eh? Yeah, it's a lot here. We're going to go down in the, over to the furthest corner that way, back to the pre-1960s car area, because I think it's time to have a look at some really, really old cars. Look at this. MG Metro Turbo. Turbocharged A-plus engine. Transverse, of course, on these, like all metros. But with a turbo bolted to it. Fabrication, all right, so it, perhaps it comes yeah. a little bit easier to you. Naturally aspirated MG in front of it. Over 60 years old, so all the cars... Here we go, we're getting close to the older car parking area. I can see the Zephyrs, that Lancia app here over the back, another sit-up-and-beg Ford at the back there, black one. A beautiful Beetle, which we'll have a look at in a minute. But let's go over here, and there's that lovely little Morris Z van on the corner there, the XGPO Morris van. Note the rubber wings on the back. There's the little Willam, Lambretta powered. Some proper old brass pyrene fire extinguisher there. It's a GPO one as well, it's a proper GPO. Right. Lovely attention to detail. These are usually dated actually. 19, either 53 or 63, can't quite see, but probably quite rare to find the GPO one. There's the bonnets up, so we can have a look at the little engine, 918cc side valve engine. This was the engine that made its way into the first of the post-war Morris Miners in 1948 Morris Miner, the low lights as they were called. That's the engine there, yeah. fitted to the Z van and also the Morris 8 Series E. We saw a Series E Tourer coming in before. Now, I think we did have a quick look along here before, but I think there are a few extra cars have joined this particular row. So we will scoot along here past this fantastic black Minx. I do like that. The Wolseley 680 police car and the Riley RM with rear spats. You don't see them with rear spats very often. <laughs> Trav TR, there's that PV544, one of two here today. Happy memories of running PVs. This has got the twin carbs, it's a 544 Sport. A bit like the, the Amazon 122S, I suppose, was the sporty version of the Amazon range and the Sport was the sporty version of the PV range. I don't think these were ever sold here in this country, so they've all been imported. And this is this Marquette. Look at that, look at that huge side valve engine. What a fantastic lump that is. I'm not sure I've ever heard of Marquette.
It's for sale, 10,950. That doesn't look like a bad buy. What a magnificent saloon that is. I wonder if we should buy that. <laughs> what a magnificent saloon or sedan, as the Americans would say. Fisher body. Oh, so this is just a little bit newer than the 1924 Dodge that we had until not that long ago. I don't know if it's here for Buick. So is this a Buick? Oh, it says Buick on the back. So the plot thickens. Marquette on the front, but Buick badges around the back. Let's have a peer in. Let's have a peer in. Let's have a quick look in here. Left hand drive. I did the same in the engine. So I did the cat stick for the block? Yeah. And it was like badger. Oh, it looks very, very comfortable in here. I know. I wonder what sort of speed this would run along happily at. What an incredible engine. Look at the size of that. That looks about the same size as the big truck Dodge engine at home. Wow. What a fantastic lump that is. Huge six cylinder side valve engine. Distributor mounted on the top, so a coil ignition. Oh, what a cracking thing this is. Proper hooter. Oh, what an interesting car. So apparently this was a one-year only car, a Buick, but for some reason they rebadged them as Marquette. Not quite sure why that would be. Yeah, it's for sale, 10950 or near offer. Well, compared to a Model A, that's a good buy. That's a, you know, what the part situation is like for older Buicks, I'm not quite sure, but what a fantastic looking thing. This could, if this could talk, I'm sure it would tell quite a few stories, but I just can't get over how big that engine looks. <laughs> and behind that lovely Marquette, aka Buick, is this Vitesse 2 litre convertible, 1967, and it is for sale. So many cars for sale here today. There's a lot of temptation here today in Malvern. 1967 2 litre Mark 1. Great little four seat convertible there. Oh. Oh, very nice too. There's the Mark 1 console. There's the Austin 10 Litchfield that we saw driving in before. And there, there's the Rover Sport. Now, is this a 12 or a 14? Beautiful P2. There's that stunning Daimler, the DB18, the drophead coupe. Beautiful, quality, quality car. There's a few cars coming and going. I think they've just had the pre-60 cars in the arena. So there are a few vehicle movements. You see that Morris over there? Mm, the the guy who knows. owns that owns that. He owns that Daimler. Mm. He owns the Nash Metropolitan and he owns the little Lamoretta. Does he? <laughs> and they're all cared for by this couple of guys. Well. Wow. If you uh, want to see an interview with the owners. Yes, yeah, on your channel. Car uh, Traction. I had quite a chat about those cars. Good. Uh, quite a fruity sounding Cortina, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, Cortina Mark II sounds. And here's that stunning Riley. Wow. I don't think pre war saloons get much better looking than that. It's very rakish. It is very rakish and raffish. Yeah, and there's a Series E, the little Morris 8 Toro that followed it in. It's a bit rare little car, mustn't it? It is, yeah. I haven't seen one before. This is a rare wee beastie. The driver's eye view. Mm. 
Right, let's have another look at this Riley. It's so low. It's incredibly low. It's super sleek. If we have a quick look in through the sliding roof. What a wonderful looking car that is. MG alongside, Healy, Mark 1 console there. This, this blue one's interesting, have you seen it? Which one, the Healy? Yes, it was raced in Australia. Was it? Yes, yeah. and then it was put back to mm. wow. It's a beautiful little car, the Austin Healy 100, a minor 1000. There's the Daimler 15. And a bullnose Cowley here. Harley had a chat with the owner of this one, so uh, that'll feature on his video of the Malvern Classic Car Show. One of his owner interviews. A lovely shell can on the running board. I recognise that. <laughs> well, you bought one of those, haven't you? Ooh. Keep out of the way of the Daimler, is it? Is it births here? Oh, and the Isetta. He owns and, and the Isetta here. Oh. There's a little Nash Metropolitan. Oh. We are surrounded by wonderful old cars. And I wouldn't have it any other way. Right. There's that fantastically original Ford Prefect, the E493A. I just love how original this is. Look at those old Blue Mel's plates. Same colour as our little Anglia. Just fantastic scenes. MGA fixed head there. The yeah, eyes just waiting its turn. Okay. The Metropolitan's running. A little B series engine, a BMC engine. It's quite an extravagant bonnet mascot on this one. It's in a very bright colour, this car. Mm. It's great, isn't it? <laughs> TR Triumph. It's a Mark 1 Ford Zephyr 6 for sale as well. Oh, there you go. See this one, aren't they? Mm. Six, six branch exhaust manifold, wider banded wheels with trim rings. Oh, yes, this one's got twin Webbers Al on it. K &M filters. Yeah. Alden cylinder head, inlet manifold, and twin downdraft Webbers. Oh. <laughs> I don't think Tornado's bad for that. Nice. Considering it's been sort of period modded, you know. Yeah. It's nice thing, A few period updates are always welcome. <laughs> Got the F type Vauxhall Victor Estates here. This is the facelifted Vauxhall Victor F type. A few goodies for sale here. Mm. What have we got here? A few workshop manuals. A little game. A few books. Let's have a quick look here. See if there's anything we need. The book of the Morris 8 and the Morris Minor. It's hmm. a nice one. The Rover 60, 75, 90 and the 105. Hmm. P4 Rovers, or was that the... Yeah, it's the P4, isn't it? 
Really interesting car, I do like an old estate car. Yeah, there's that Mark 1. Now this Rover, the Sports Saloon, it's a 12. The Rover 12 Sports Saloon. I like the early P2s with the spoked wheels. They went to solid wheels a bit later on. But the wire wheel cars I think look fantastic, especially these ones with the low roof line. Very smart. There's the little Series E and the Daimler DB18. Pre select the gearbox. And there's the pre select the handle on the right hand side of the column. And there's that Austin 10 Litchfield with smoker's hatch. So set into the roof there. <laughs> Super clean little car. Okay, let's go over here. So we've got a fleet spec 105E. This was the base model with a narrower grille. Narrow grille, fixed rear side windows as opposed to the opening windows that most 105Es that you see have. So this was your fleet spec, this was your sales rep special in many ways. And as a result, they haven't survived in huge numbers. Look at that painted, the rear lights around are all painted on these body colour, whereas there'd be chrome on the 105Es and the 105E Supers and the 123Es and that kind of thing. I've been the base spec, this is pretty basic, no bumper overriders or any of those business. You may not even have a passenger sun visor. Nope, no passenger sun visor. A bit like if you've seen the recent Cape Thorn Hall video, there was a base spec Vauxhall Viva HA there, and that was base, really base as well, just like this fantastic Anglia. Okay, we've got an MR2 here, Mark II. Cortina Lotus. Much modified Moggy. The Daimler, the SP250. This has got the same V8 engine as that Mark II Jag shaped Daimler we were looking at before, the white one. Great little engines these are. Fiberglass bodied cars. Quite unusual, very distinctive styling. Big fins. Riley 1.5, twin carbs. <laughs> Little Herald convertible here, 1200 probably. And an immaculate VW Beetle Cabriolet, proper Carmen converted car. It's not amazing. It is a stunning looking motor car. Um, and again, one of those. They are all by the soul. They rot in those terrors. But um, that was Austin in, in the early 60s, wasn't it? Austin. Let's have a scoot along here, the XK150, side by side with the Morris 1100 MGC GT. There's the Escort Mark IV. The Orion, the booted version of the Escort. There's that Monte Carlo, Nancy a Beta Monte Carlo, engine cover raised. Z3, GT, and here is that Lancia app here. Oh, that's a rare sight, especially here in this country, a little V4 engine hung out the front there. Wow, what a compact little engine that is. And you'll notice the rear doors are rear hinged. 
if I remember correctly, these are pillarless in the middle. So there's a lot of strength in that roof structure and the sill structure. I'm pretty sure they don't have a, a B pillar. A handsome little car. Like I say, you very rarely see these here in the UK. There's a bit of history, 1962 Lancia Appia Berlina, Berlina is saloon, an Italian I think. <laughs> really great to see these slightly left field, slightly oddball cars here at these classic car shows. There's that immaculate Morris pickup. Is this the oldest surviving mini pickup? The sheet in the window asks. And at the end here, an E93A Ford Prefect. The proper old Hills number plate on it. Super clean car. Like I say, we bought ours from just up the road. It was literally a couple of miles that way. Very, very local indeed. But yeah, what a great little car this is. So this has got the 10 horse. 1172 engine. I've fiddled with these many, many times over the years in various vans, pickups, and of course the Anglia had the slightly smaller version of that engine. The Anglia was 933cc, the eight horsepower car. And the big Healy, the Austin Healy 3000 Mark III. Morris Minor, the good old Morris Minor. And there's that other Volvo PV, the 544. This looks super original. <laughs> oh, looks really original paint on this one. A few mods in here, a few extra gauges. <laughs> Different seats. Yeah, the last PV had was the 444, that's the one we had. And had the split front window and being a really early one it also had the split rear window as well I wonder where that car is now right these drive really really nicely the runner-up in 1960 to 69 ladies and gentlemen there's that magnificent Bentley a Citroen I think that's an ID 19 I think and the winner, Beautiful the looking car. car, look at the badge on that. And there's the Ripple Bonnet 2CV. Seat out, you can whiz the seat out in a matter of moments. You just clip onto the floor brackets in there. And the Peugeot 304 Cabriolet, very swish little car, very elegant, understated, stylish cars I think. Another Riley 1.5, good to see a couple of those here today. I've seen very few in yellow, I've seen quite a few, we have a white one. Rare car, rare, rare car. And on the end, next to the Riley 1.5, a fruity looking Escort 1600 GT Mexico. And that will be, I don't know, edging about 4 to 2, 2 o'clock. So listen out for that. And then we'll go to the 80s, the 90s, the 2000s. Um, you might look at some commercials, to get some commercials in as well. So just listen out for uh, the running order as we go through into the afternoon. But now it's 1970 to 79. This is usually on a popular section.
Here's the American section and the glorious pre-war Packard, just how wonderful. Um, what a wonderfully shaped car that is. He's been over the last couple of years, but uh, he's, um, he's doing all Such right. a stylish machine. Packard 120 series. Another Citroen just coming in. The turnout so far has been tremendous. Absolutely tremendous. We've got a, a Mini 1275 GT. There's the rest of American Corner. And there's that Chevy 3 100 we saw really early on, early doors here today at the Malvern Classic Cars Show. It's a 1953, I think that was the last year of the two-piece windscreen. For 54, they went to a one-piece glass V8 Ford pickup. A great pair of classic American pickups there, we approve of that. There's the mighty Cadillac, the 64 Caddy, the four-door. Stingray, a Chevrolet on the end here. Right, well, we're getting near to the sports car section, which is where we are parked up today, along with all these Jaguars and Porsches and such like. And we're on the end up there. Holly's already made a start on the sandwiches, so I think I'd best skip over there before he eats everything. Certainly from Europe, it should be next year sometime next week. It's a pleasure to have you. Thank you very much. <laughs> right, let's have a quick look at the rest of the sports cars. It's mainly modern-ish cars, slightly more modern than we cover here. But we'll have a quick look round just in case. There's a little minivan just heading towards the arena. But because it's a special section, we will say so long as it's um, over 10 years old. So it could go back to 2010. Let's say 2010. What a clean little mini that is. So that's and there's that Lotus 11 replica, Westfield built. Up to a MX5. TVR glistening with one of those very jazzy paint jobs. Porsche 924 with the SLK Merc. There's the Crossfire, the two TR7 dropheads. MGBs, the GT40 rep, and the Lotus Elan plus two. Yeah, it's getting warm now, properly warm, they reckon 25 degrees. If you're watching this in America or Australia, you will laugh at our 25 degrees, I'm sure, but trust me, given in mind the weather we've had lately, this is pretty warm for the UK at the beginning of September. And here's that pretty bonkers looking Lotus Elan Plus 2. Mazda Rotary Club, it says on the side, Rotary inside. I think Harley said there's a lot of Mazda RX-8 hidden away under that body shell. A couple of Subarus. Yeah. Supra. Aston Martin DB7. Midnight Blue TR6. MGB. Little Alfa Romeo Spider here. Pininfarina design. And on the end here, a 205 CJ, the Peugeot, the little open top Peugeot. Think about car plus one-ish uh, for the motorcycles. Facilities here. Uh, we've got one or two catering units in the long wheels. We're not quite sure where they are. I think there's one as well on the uh, car park behind us. 
Martin Wieger. Oh, is it Father? He's over there, is he? He's still got one. Classic bikes up here, Suzuki. An unusual one. Water cooled Suzuki, the Triumph, the BSA. There's a fantastic Beezer here. How cool is that? Say what? Yeah. He's got a pickup fantastic old bike oh, that is. Two, oh, right. uh, I was saying to that earlier that we should have that on the standard. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Get one of those trunks. Yeah, yeah. Kawasaki 500 and a little Honda 125 on the end. Just having a quick walk around just in case we missed anything and look at how clean this mug is. It's quite a late saloon on an H plate. Must have about 1970 or thereabouts. The Moggies went out of production, I think, in 71. It was a Traveller was the last Morris Minor made by BMC. And this is quite a late example of a saloon, but it's just in phenomenal condition. I just had to stop and fire up the camera because it's just what a lovely, lovely old Morris Minor. There are actually quite a few smart Moggies here today, but I just wanted to stop and have a look at this one. Mm. Yeah, yeah. So, basic, have we embarrassed us? Well, I don't know really. Maybe, maybe. But um, we've been there are a lot in this sort of cover. Mm. And, um, really nice. Lovely. Yeah. Really, really sharp looking little car, that is. Yeah, it is. Yeah. Some car movements. It's so lunchtime now. And look at that mighty, mighty Mark IV Zephyr. I'm not quite sure where these cars are going, maybe they're nipping off for a pub lunch somewhere, who knows. Yeah, the Cepha is a late arrival here today at Malvern. What an amazing car that is. Don't see many of those. Well, we're back in the pre 60s, of course. This is where we keep being drawn back to. I thought I'd just have another look at this fantastic little Doctor's Coupe, the Morris Cowley, the bullnose Morris of the mid to late 1920s. There's a gap next to it at the moment, so that means we can stand back and really appreciate the lines of this great little car. It's quite a noisy beetle, perhaps with a slipping clutch, I'm not quite sure. But anyway, that's, that's the dicky seat we used to call those, or the rumble seat in American parlance, if you happen to be the other side of the Atlantic. Oh, what a bonny little car, very cheerful colour. Oh, oh, it's yellow, so of course we approve of that. 1926 Morris Cowley Bullnose Fixed Head Coupe, also known as the Doctor's Coupe. Always oh, good to see vintage and other pre-war cars here at these shows. They seem to be a slightly disappearing sight, so I'm always keen to feature them in these videos here on the Old Classic Car Channel because I do like these early cars myself, including this magnificent pre-war Daimler, which we've seen a couple of times already today. But, well, Somehow. why not have another look, eh? Just magnificent. Look at the quality it's of that. Yeah. yeah, this is the 15, 15 horsepower RAC rated car. Yeah, just lovely, lovely machine. Six light coachwork, four doors, rear hinge doors, front and rear. Did it? Oh, it won, the, won its class, did it? The pre 60s. It's hard to see those, aren't they? <laughs> yeah. There's that fantastic Victor 
one of the things I like about these Victor estates is the curved rear side glass. I love the way this curves round. The Humber Super Snipe estates were the same. They had curved rear glass as well. Very American inspired design these. Yeah, I could definitely see myself in one of those. Such a practical car that is. <laughs> Probably. And there's that little Isetta we saw driving in before. Blue Bell, Isetta 300. Yeah, these have got names on Made in Brighton. There's that Metropolitan and the little Willam van here on the end. Mm. Very lifelike breathing effects. Not a real one. <laughs> I assume it's not a real cat. No, it's not. <laughs> There's the TR6s off. Ooh, what a cool little thing. It's the Monza Grand Prix today, so maybe they're all whizzing back home to tune in to see Max win another race. <laughs> but we will be staying here and we will catch the Grand Prix highlights a little bit later. <laughs> well, no one else is going to win, are they? But then again, who knows? Point him off. Yeah. Well, you know, by the time this video goes out, we will know the result of the Monza Grand Prix and maybe, maybe Max won't win. Maybe Sainz, who have qualified on pole position, spoiler alert. Um, <laughs> No, that, maybe that he'll been weeks ago by the time yeah. people are watching this. Yeah, maybe maybe he'll convert his pole position into a win. Who knows? But we'll be he'll staying be here Texas. for a little while yet. And there's that fantastic Marquette, mm. the Buick in disguise. And there's a Series 2 minor, like I say, the cheese grater grill, that's a sign of an early Series 2. After a while they went to the horizontal bars, which we uh, recognise on all the later Morris Miners as well, but this is an early Series 2 cheese grater grill. About 1952 or three, about that. It's a two door. Still with semaphore set into the rear panel there. It's like your one, isn't it? Similar. Yeah. No, it's a 53, there you go. This is a Series 2. Yeah. First registered 10th of March, 1953. And this is what they call the long body moulding, where this little moulding that runs where the roof is welded on to the rear panel, the beading carries on past the gutter. And in Morris Minor circles, these are known as the LBM body shells. The long, the, the long, the long body moulding, because this moulding here carries on past the gutter. On most two-door miners, the gutter comes down here, and it's, that moulding stops there. But on some in the 1950s, the moulding carried on to there. I've got a question, and I'm not really sure if anyone knows the answer to why that is. I don't know why that is. Uh, it must be a production thing. But yeah, so this is an LBM, a long body moulding. Your question was? My other question is, why do you know that? I just remember reading about it when we had our 52. Was ours a long body mould? No, ours was a four door, so they didn't have it. It's only the two door. Oh, what an amateur. <laughs> There's that super shiny javelin. How could you forget? Yeah, ours was a 52 four door highlight. Highlight? Yeah. One of the first of the Moggis to have the headlights in the raised position. Got an Avant Quattro here. That's quite an unusual car now, isn't it? An Austin 7 size trailer here. I wonder what that brought in today. I wonder what Jim came in on that. Anyway, let's carry on. I love the, I love the interiors on these Jowets. Is this a deluxe then? Is it a deluxe or is it a base model? This is the deluxe because over there the rear parcel shelf doubles up as a little picnic table so you can pull that out of there from under the back window and it clips in on the back of the front seat so the people sat in the back have got a little picnic table and that's a thing that was on the deluxe models only. Same for this slightly more appointed dashboard compared to the base model as well. Loads of people here. Yeah, a lot of people are moving on, so we need to dash around and get our photographs. And the Riley one and a half's going. Well, fear not folks, we'll be staying a little while longer. Some of the auto jumble is undercover in here, in this agricultural building, Sierra, and a lovely CA van. It's very cool, I like that. 
many, many goodies or oldie worldy cars here for sale in the auto jumble area. Got some centre wheel caps for a Leyland bus. And look at this incredible V8 Ford. That's had a fair bit done to it. Now we spotted this one in the auto jumble area at Ragley Hall. You may have seen that video yet. If you haven't, go and check it out after this one. That was a really good one. Ragley Hall down in Warwickshire. Yes, but we saw this CX there again in the auto jumble area. What a great looking car that is. Yeah. Yes, yeah, many goodies. Oh, plenty of petrol cans. Harley's been round here already. But I won't have the prices. Many, many goodies for sale. Only four CV parts. Uh, Harley's already raided various oil can suppliers' stalls. And loads of grease guns. You don't, you, don't, you don't need any more grease guns. No, no, I'm not buying any. Mm, lots of BMC parts in here. If you looked at those tins over the back there, Hall, if you, if you check those out. Oh, yeah. this is where you bought. This is where you bought yours from, yes. isn't it? Yes. Um, yet again, he has been investing. So what we bought this time, younger man? Show me. Oh. Shell Spirax E140 EP gear oil tin. Oh, that's nice. That, that'll look good in there, the shed. Oh. Oh, I've not bought anything yet. I haven't bought anything. It's a Porsche 928, front engine V8, big GT car, car of the year, 1977. Well, it was the earlier one, this is the S4. But yeah, quite a cool car. I quite like these. Auto box in this one. I'm going to have a quick look at this E-Type series one and a half that's up here. I'm advised it's a 4.2, so I'll make it the series one and a half. 1965. Yeah, nice, isn't it? It's got your four-point harnesses in as well, rather than the regular seat belts. Yeah. Smaller steering wheel, maybe. Yeah, possibly. Yeah. Nice usable E type. Nine eleven and the XK eight. Hello to Silan plus two is heading back homewards by the look of it. Right. The runner up, ladies and gentlemen, is the. Right. Good turning out. What I'm going to do now, do this and show us where we can, where the weather's good, is to see you guys kick them up, 
start them up and just do a couple of laps gently around the arena and hopefully Paul will be the last one to go round on his own so we can all congratulate him on being the winner. Now anybody can go first but just take your time folks and if Bob husband and wife keep on going as it following round Right, thanks to Chris for that. Um, now, what we're going to do now, we're not going to go to the 80s, we're going to go to the minis. So this next section, 10 years old. Right, so let's have all the minis that are in the park here today, whether you've been in the arena or not, and this applies to the Mercia Mini Club as well. Let's have as many minis in the arena as we can, and then Chris, again, is going to cast his um, expert eye over them and choose a runner-up and a winner. And the All the minis that are in the park here today, part of uh, this event, we want you in the arena, so long as they are 10 years old. Well, I don't think we had a close look at this console Capri after seeing it driving in earlier on. What a great looking car that is. Very rakish, fastback design on these Capris, as opposed to the console classic saloons, which are contemporaries of the Capri. Raise your bonnets. Each and every one of you to raise your bonnet to make sure you haven't got an elastic band under there, or you've got a rover being half-meter engine. Doesn't matter. Um, Some sort of mini body shell. But come on, this time round, let's make it something different, something special. Raise your bonnets. There's that lovely early P6 Rover 2000 that came in before. 65, this particular car dates back to, so it's a fairly early one. But lovely simple lines, very simple, straightforward lines that they lost a little bit on the later ones, I think, but even opening rear quarter lights in the doors. That's a nice little detail, quality, quality cars these were. Lots of Rover manuals on the back seat there. Maybe that was a score from the Auto Jumble. Ooh, looks lovely in there. Different arches, etc. Yeah. Um, have you been involved in converting it? No. Little telltales yeah. on the tops of the lamps there. Dave, Dave is it in great condition? Um, how long have you owned it? Uh, so clearly, it's still readily available. Well, we're getting towards the end of the day here. At Malvern, at the Three County Showground, but I just wanted to come and have another look at this mighty Zephyr 4 that came in. It's a fairly late arrival, but you hardly ever see these. I think there was a, an executive Zodiac estate here at Malvern last year, but I don't remember seeing this one before. Little Riley 1.5s off. Great little cars they are. But yeah, this is a really rare big old Ford. So different to the, the Mark 3s that came before with the fins and so on. These were much squarer lines. Yeah. Yes, very long bonnet. Quite a short boot lid. Quite a long bonnet. Fairly interesting proportions. So this is a Zephyr 4. And most of the ones you see are the six cylinder cars, but yeah. It's a huge it's a, bonnet for a four cylinder. It's a huge car, full stop. Yes. I think it's fabulous. What a rare old survivor that is. Um, I know you're a member of, say, the Mercy Minis Club, a popular club, but. Well, folks, well, I think there are quite a few gaps on the field, so we, I think, will head northwards fairly soon. It's a good two, two and a half hour drive back, so we will start heading off. I like say many, many people have done the same already. But as we have got a fair way to go, I think we will probably do the same. What a fantastic Zephyr 6. So for sale if you're interested, 12 and a half. So yeah, anyway, thank you very much for watching this video. I'll include links to some of the other videos we've done at the end of this one. Please check out the rest of the channel if you're new to the old Classic Car channel. There are many, many videos 
about the shows we've been to, museums, tinkering in the garage at home and all that kind of thing. Likes, comments, subs and all that kind of thing. Very, very welcome, please. If you would like to join the channel for a modest monthly sum and help support what we do here on the old classic car channel and indeed Harley's car traction channel, please take a look at the join button just below this particular video. Thanks so much for watching. More videos along very, very soon. So bye for now. Now, again, traditional many. What year is it? 88. I think you're right there, yeah. I mean, we, we know they are so iconic, it's unbelievable. Um, and I think it stands at the top of uh, iconic cars, really, for the old Volkswagen. Um, but they are very much a cars and uh, you can pick up anything and put a different car, so uh, yeah, love them. There's so many people that have learned to drive in a Mini, it's, it's incredible. I will have you into the arena in the next uh, five, ten minutes or so. In second place, it goes to the Morris Traveller, O.A. Ruffles. And we've all seen that car back in the car we It's like the Italian job.